All right, so today we're talking about chapter 10, section 3, the ellipse. So uh, an ellipse is the collection of all points in the plane, the sum of whose distance from two pick fixed points called the foci is a constant. So if we take a peek here, focus one, focus two, the distance from here to P and from P to F2 is the same. Please note that an ellipse has two vertices. It has a major axis, which is big, and a minor axis, which is smaller. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at what our ellipse information is when we are centered at the origin. So the distance from F1 to P, any fixed point, plus the distance from P to F2 is gonna be two times A. And we remember A from our uh, yesterday's formula. So this A is gonna come into play um, in our ellipse formula. Our focus one is at negative C comma zero. C is going to be this distance here from the origin to the focus. And then F2 is going to be at C comma zero. C is the distance from the origin to our focus. All right, so here's the equation. If we're at center zero, zero, we have our major axis, which means the one that is longer um, along the x-axis. Our foci, so make sure you highlight this. Our foci is at negative C comma zero and C comma zero, and the vertices are at negative A comma zero and A comma zero. We have an equation, which is X squared over A squared. Where do we get the A from? That is from the vertice. Plus Y squared over B squared. Where do we get the B squared from? this equation right here, b squared equals a squared minus c. b is also the minor axis distance from the center, uh, from the origin to the ellipse. So this distance here is b. And it's always going to equal 1. Equation of the ellipse always equals 1. All right, so now we're going to do um, put together an equation of an ellipse with our center at the origin. We know that one focus is at three comma zero, and the vertex is at negative four comma zero. Then we're going to graph the equation. So um, two things to remember is that uh, b squared equals a squared minus c squared and x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one is the equation that we're going for. So first, let's go ahead and draw a picture. The center's at the origin. You know when you have the focus, that tells you what your major axis is. So if your focus is at three comma zero, that means your major axis is the x-axis, and you're going to have a matching focus at negative 3 comma 0. So you can go ahead and graph those two items. Then it tells you that one of your vertexes is at negative 4, 0. So you can go ahead and put that in, and you know you're going to have a matching vertex um, on the other side as well, so that's at 4, 0. What we don't know is the minor axis. We don't know we know it now because it's on this graph, but how do we get root seven and negative root seven? We're gonna use this equation to do that. So from the center to the vertex is four, that's A. 
from the center to the focus is three. That's C. We plug it into this equation, B squared equals A squared minus C squared. And we get B squared equals 16 minus nine, because four squared is 16 and three squared is nine. And that equals seven. So B is equal to root seven, which is what is here. So now we put our numbers into this equation here. X squared over four squared is 16. Y squared over square root of seven squared is seven. And that's gonna equal one. So that will give you your equation. Okay. In order to graph this on a graphing calculator, Desmos Graphing Utility will graph it just as it is. Okay. When we go to graph this on a graphing calculator, your graphing calculator is set up so you graph y equals. So you have to split this into two separate equations. So in order to solve for y, we gotta subtract negative, so we have to subtract x squared over 16, boom, boom, from the one, and multiply by seven, that's what this is, and then take the square root. When we take the square root, we have a plus and a minus version. So when we graph it, we graph y1 equals a positive square root seven times one minus x squared over 16, and y2 equals negative, because that's the minus part, square root seven parenthesis one minus x squared over 16. So to use your graphing calculator, you gotta divvy it up into the two, to y equals and then to the two separate equations. All right, so let's take a look at an ellipse when we already have the equation. We are gonna analyze it, so we're gonna find the vertices and the focus. So we got x squared over 25 plus y squared over nine equals one. Just looking at this and comparing it to the equation, what are A and B? A is the square root of 25, so A is five, and B is the square root of nine, which is three. So if we're trying to find C, we know C squared equals A squared minus B squared. We're gonna go ahead and we know that because five is bigger than three, the major axis is the x-axis. So we know A goes with X and B goes with Y. Uh, the vertices are at plus or minus A. A is five. So they're at plus or minus five comma zero. We know that C is equal to 25 minus nine, which is 16. So C squared equals 16. So C is equal to Four. So the, fo the foci are at plus or minus four. And we're gonna take a look at the graph and make sure all of our information makes sense. Foci is, are always on the major axes. Now, what if our major axis is the y-axis? Well, it changes the foci. Instead of being c comma zero, it's gonna be at zero comma c and zero comma negative c. The vertices, instead of being on the x-axis, they're gonna be on the y-axis. So it's gonna be at zero comma negative a and zero comma a. The equation is almost the same except for x has the b and y has the a. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. And now you've got um, like an egg standing on its head and a tall ellipse. So whatever your major axis is, that's where your vertices lie and that's where your fo 
the, your foci are. All right, so let's look at a scenario where we kind of have to fuss with the equation. So I have uh, x, 9x squared plus y squared equals 9. And this does not look like the traditional ellipse problem. There's no denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by this value here because for an ellipse, we always want that value to equal 1. So it's going to be everything divided by 9. So when I divide everything by 9, I get x squared over 1 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. The larger denominator is 9, so the and the smaller denominator is 1. So y is the major axis. So we know that the c value, the um, a squared is 9, so a is 3. So our vertex is going to be at 0, comma, plus or minus 3. And our minor axis is going to be at uh, plus or minus 1, comma, 0. When we use c squared equals a squared minus b squared to find c, we see that it's a squared is 9 minus b squared, which is 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. And the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. So the foci are at 0, comma, plus or minus 2 root 2. If you are graphing that, so when you're writing the foci out, use 2 root 2. When you're graphing it, go ahead and find the decimal equivalent so you can put a spot on the graph around that place. All right, so the graph looks like this. V1 is at 0, comma, negative 3. V2 is at 0, 3. Minor axis is at 1, 0 and negative 1, 0. The foci are at 0, comma, negative 2 root 2. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on my calculator. 2 times square root of 2. That's 2.8. So real close to 3, but not quite 3. And then 0, comma, 2 root 2, 0, comma, negative 2 root 2. All right, so let's find the equation given little pieces of information, kind of like being a detective. One focus is at 0, 2. Vertices are at 0, negative 3 and 0, 3. When 0 is the x value of your vertice, you know that your major axis is y. The first thing you I would do is probably graph these things. So I'm going to throw the graph. There we go. So I'd graph it first. So I'd put focus at 0, 2. And you know your major axis is the y-axis, so you're going to have another focus at 0, negative 2. And then I would throw down the vertices, 0, 0 3, and 0, negative 3. And then now we have to find our minor axes. So we go... <coughs> Go back to here. So if we got x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1, the distance from the center to a focus is c, and that is 2, because the center is at 0, 0, and our focus is at 0, 2. So c is equal to 2. Vertex is a, and the a value is 3, because we're at 0, 3. So we know that this is going to be 9. So we're going to plug in uh, 2 for C and 3 for A. So it's going to be 9 minus 4, which is 5. So B squared is equal to 5, or B is equal to square root 5. Since B squared is equal to 5, we're just going to go ahead and put the 5 in here. A is equal to 3, so we're going to square it and put it here. So now we have an equation. Check. And then let's go ahead and graph. So then we go square root of 5 
is 2.2, so real close, so it's a little above two, not as close to three. So on my graph, you just, you put square root of five when you're writing it, but you get the decimal equivalent so you can graph it as accurately as possible. All right, now we're moving the center. Sorry, zero, zero. Move it in H comma K. So when we have H comma K, it changes our focus vertices and our equation just a little bit. So when your major axis is parallel to the X axis, so longer horizontally, your focus, so if your center is at HK, your focus is going to be at H plus C comma K and H minus C comma K. Your vertices are going to be at H plus A comma K and H minus A comma K. The H and K come into the equation here um, in the parentheses with um, H goes with the X, K goes with the Y, everything else is the same. When you're parallel to the y-axis, so you're longer vertically, <clears throat> you're going to be adding and subtracting the c values from the k. So longer y, we add and subtract from the y-coordinate of our center. Longer y, we add or subtract our a values from the center to find our vertices. And then same as when we center at the origin, if A is bigger, it'll make you longer vertically, it'll go with the Y, and B goes with the X. And here's a little picture of what that looks like. So negative X minus H squared over A squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared equals 1. We're still equaling one. We are just now shifting. All right, so let's put together an equation for an ellipse with the center at two, negative three, a focus at three, negative three, and a vertex at five, negative three. I always plot those points first. I know that sometimes I don't have you. So if we are drawing this picture, <clears throat> we have our center at 2, negative 3. We know that one focus is at 3, negative 3, so over 3, down 3. 3, negative 3. Over 3, down 3, so right here. Yeah. And then... The distance from the center to the focus is one. I would put, I would actually put this coordinate on here. So I would write three negative three because your other focus is gonna be at one negative three and one vertex at five negative three. So you go, okay, so the distance between two negative three and five negative three is three units. So you're gonna go ahead and go three units to the left, and that's gonna be your other vertice. So for this problem, H and K is gonna be two and negative three. We have a major uh, axis uh, the, our longer axes are um, horizontal, so the A value is going to go under the X squared. So we're going to have X minus H squared over A squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared equals 1. We know that the distance from the center to the focus is C. Distance from here to here, and that is equal to one. The distance from the center to the vertice is three, so that makes A equal to three. 
if we're looking for, so now we have H, K, we have A, we're gonna find B and then we are done with our equation. <clears throat> A is three, we're gonna square that to get nine. C is one, we're gonna square that to get one. Nine minus one is eight, and that's, so B squared is eight. So that goes into this equation here. So the equation is x minus two squared over nine plus y plus three squared over eight. Notice how <clears throat> we had a negative minus a negative ends up being positive. And all that is equal to one. So to find our minor axes, we are going to add <clears throat> two root two to our y value to find our minor vertice. And then we're gonna subtract two root two from our y coordinate to find our other minor vertice, just so that we can draw it. All right. Yesterday we had to complete the square. We're gonna have to do it twice sometimes. Um, so when you're analyzing equations and they don't give it to you in the proper format, um, the first thing we have to do is move all the numbers that don't have an X or Y to the right hand side, group the X's together and the Y's together. The second thing you do <coughs> is um, because I want just x squared, I don't want four x squared, so I'm gonna factor out a four, because I can. So I get four parentheses x squared minus two x plus y squared plus four y equals negative four. So now I'm gonna complete the square. Whatever I add to one side, I have to add to the other. So I'm gonna put a little space next to my x squared minus two x plus space, plus y squared plus four y plus space. And then I'm gonna have a space here that's gonna match up with the one here, because whatever I put here, I'm gonna have to put here as well. And I'm gonna have a second space because I'm completing the square twice. So this second space goes here. I've factored out a four. So whatever I put here, I'm gonna have to multiply it by four. And that's what goes over on the right hand side. Because four times one is four. To get this one, remember we take our B value, cut it in half, so that's uh, negative two divided by two is one, sorry, it's negative one, and negative one squared is one. That's where that comes from. We do the same thing with this four here. We cut it in half, four divided by two is two, and two squared is four. So the four gets added to the left and the right, and this one times four gets added to the left and the right. All right, let's go ahead and write this as perfect squares. We got four parentheses x minus one squared plus y plus two squared equals negative four plus four plus four is four. We're so very close to having an equation of an ellipse. We just need to divide everything by four because remember we want one on the right hand side. Wait, why did we add two four? We go ahead and we divide everything by four and we get x minus one squared plus y plus two squared over four equals one. So now we can get our a and our b. We can find c, so we can, because um, analyzing we're gonna need our c. <clears throat> if, so we just go four minus one equals c squared, so four here, one from this guy, because it's over one. And we get c squared equals three. 
So our center is at 1 comma negative 2. Our vertices are at is convoluted. Okay. Our vertices are at 1 comma negative 2, so our center, plus or minus our a value. So remember a was 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And our foci are at 1 comma negative 2 plus or minus C, which is the square root of 3. Go ahead, the picture looks like this. All right, the word problem. Guess what the shape of an orbit is? Heck yeah, it's an ellipse. Um, so we got a bunch of ellipses running around in our universe. Um, The Whispering Gallery in the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago is 47.3 feet long. The distance from the center of the room to the foci is 20.3 feet. So it's an elliptical. And um, if you haven't been to Chicago and gone to the Whispering Gallery, if you stand at the foci and whisper, it will, the sound will travel and you can hear because of the properties of the ellipse. Um, so it's good times. <clears throat> All right, so let's put these dimensions onto a picture. If I am creating this problem and you guys are masters of your own universe, I would make my center at zero, zero because that's the easier equation. So an ellipse with um, center at zero, zero has this generic equation. It's 47.3 feet long. So we're gonna make the room longer than it is taller. <clears throat> if you draw an ellipse, They're saying this whole distance of your room is 47.3 feet. To find the A, we need half of that, right? They gave us 2A. So we're going to go ahead and cut that in half, and we get A is equal to 23.65 feet. We know that from the center of the room to the foci is 20.3 feet. That gives us C. So we're going to use the B squared equals A squared minus C squared to find our B value. So we can put it into our equation. So we go 23.65 squared minus 20.3 squared equals 147.2325. We know that A is 23.65, so we got to square it before we put it in our equation. We know B squared is already 147.2325, so we'll just go ahead and throw that right on into the equation. The height of the room is going to be your A amount. I'm oh, sorry, in this case it's B. So the height of the room is going to be your B amount, which is the square root of 147.2325, which is approximately 12.1 feet. And that's all for ellipses today.